Hello everyone, I'm Di Xing. I'm happy to present our work on logs, a tool for recommending visualizations in date frame workflows. Pandas date frame is one of the most popular tools used by data scientists. It has it provides more than 600 functionalities tailored for data science across data loading, cleaning, and the data analysis. It can also be easily integrated with existing tools such as Jupyter Notebook, where users can inspect or visual, visualize their intermediate results. People love pandas. Its daily downloads is more than 3 million, and based on a recent survey from Stack Overflow, pandas is used by more than a quarter of the survey developers. While using pandas to analyze the dataset, the very first step is to understand and explore the dataset. Data visualizations come in handy here because it provides uh, visual insights to end users. However, visualizing a dataset requires non-trivial programming effort. For many users, it typically takes a few steps to understand questions like, what part of the data should I look at? What transformation do I need to apply in order to get data prepared for a visualization? In addition, they also need to consider questions like what encodings or chart types should I pick in order to uh, highlight the trends or patterns in the data. Here I have shown two examples for plotting a simple bar chart, which requires multiple lines of code. However, in reality, in data exploration, we need to create multiple visualizations, which in turn require much coding work. In fact, a recent analysis of Jupyter Notebook has shown that over 20% of the duplicated code is this code. Due to the barriers for creating visualizations, users only, many users only visualize their data during the late stages of their workflow rather than experiment throughout. This substantial programming overhead has significantly hindered data exploration, especially when users only have a vague idea about what they are looking for. Therefore, we propose LOGS, a tool for recommending visualizations in data frame workflows. It has been published in this year's VLDB and adopted by many no in adopted in many no-code and low-code settings across different sectors, including medicine, finance, uh, education, and more. In this talk, I want to share with you four challenges we have encountered while building logs and how to address those challenges. First, I want to start with how to display visual recommendations in a seamless manner. Logs provide adopts an always on framework that recommends visualizations at any point of the, of the workflow. Whenever users print out a data frame, logs will recommend visualizations at the same time. It provides an alternative view to the original table view from pandas such that, such that users can switch back and forth between the two different views. Sometimes the table view is more useful because users want to understand the structure of the data frame, or the, uh, in other cases, logs could be more useful because it provides visual insights into the data. Here, I want to use a demo to show how logs works. To enable logs, you only need to import a logs along with your pandas import statement, and that does not change your pandas code. When you print out a data frame, it will uh, it will provide provide two complement reviews, the pandas view and logs view. When you toggle to the logs view, it will uh, it will organize all of the relevant visualizations into actions across tabs. For example, this correlation action includes all of the visualizations for the correlation between two attributes. And we also have other actions like distribution and the occurrences. In addition, users are able to express their intent to steer recommendations. For example, this user is interested in the relationship between two, the two attributes. When they print out the data frame and toggle 
to a log view where we show the intended visualization and also recommend additional visualizations this user might be interested in. For example, for this intense action, we further break down the data points into colors based on one additional attribute. We can also add additional filter to allow users to look into the patterns of a subset of the data. Finally, this generalized action will remove one attribute and visualize the distribution of another attribute. The next question is, what recommendations should we show to advance the analysis? Our idea is to model visualization recommendations and the state machine. Each rec recommendation corresponds to a transition or an analytical action that takes the, the data scientist from one state to a new one. To represent a state, we use the attributes being visualized and the filters being applied. Let's do an example. Here we have a scatter plot that visualizes the relationship between two attributes. And uh, we, for the current state, we do not have a, a filter here. We can transition this state to a new one in either attribute space or filter space. For example, we can add a filter to uh, allow users to look at a look into the patterns of a subpopulation of data, or we can add additional attributes to further break down the data points by colors based on the additional attribute. In general, each analytical action corresponds a move in the uh, attribute or filter hierarchy. For the attribute space, when we go down the hierarchy, we basically add attributes. We, similarly, we, we can also swap attributes or uh, remove attributes to explore other states in the attribute hierarchy. For the filter space, we can perform similar and analytic, analytical actions to explore the states in this hierarchy. The next question is, uh, next, we consider how to allow users to steer the recommendations. The core idea is to allow users to express their data-centric intent, and Lux is responsible for inferring the visualization codings and uh, other details. For example, this user is interested in the, in the relationship between two attributes, inequality and average life expectancy. And Lux is able to automatically pick the scatter plot and other appropriate uh, encodings based on the existing base best practice. More broadly, users are able to express their intent not just in attributes, but also in filter. Using the same intent language, the where users are able to create visualizations on demand. For example, this user is interested in the distribution of the attribute stringency. After filtering some data, they can create the same they can create a visualization on the same attribute and compare the two visualizations based on the based on different data sets. In addition, they are able to visualize the um, vis visualize the relationship between stringency and the and the other attribute, and also visualize stringency between any other attributes which are represented as a question mark here. We have formalized our intent language compared to other frameworks. Our intent language is more succinct and also allows user, users to think at the level of data, data rather than worrying about the visualization details. Our final challenge is around a scalability, how to recommend the visualizations at an interactive speed. Visualization recommendation is costly. Um, for the very first step, we need to connect that data for deciding the data types or chart types. In logs, we need to con uh, collect mean or max values for each column and the cardinality for each unique values in each column. After, we would recommend the visualizations based on interest in the scores. And uh, here, the cost step is to compute the interest in the scores for uh, all of the different uh, candidate visualizations. When the number of candidate visualizations is large, this step is very time consuming. 
Therefore, we propose three operations to reduce the execution time of logs. For the first operation, our idea is to lazily compute recommendations only when users request it, like printing out a date frame. And we will uh, cache the um, recommendation and reduce them for future prints. However, the trick is that we have to check whether a date frame has been modified or not. If it is, we have to invalidate the cached results and recompute from scratch. For this example on the slide, we will only compute the recommendations for the second cell, uh, recommendations for the second cell and reduce them for future cells. Our second operation is around reducing the cost of computing interest in the score. The, the idea is that we can take an early pass to approximately compute interest in the scores using sample data and prune the candidate visualizations based, uh, based on a threshold. For the remaining visualizations, we will compute, we will take a lot of paths and compute the exact scores and uh, rank over rank the visualizations based on exact scores. Our final operation is to employ the uh, asynchronous execution to redu further reduce the response time of recommendations. The observation here is that users typically spend a few seconds or even half a minute before switching to a different tab. Therefore, our idea is to return control to users when, have, when we have computed all of the visualizations for one tab and compute the rest of the visualizations in the background. We perform our experiments on two data sets and two uh, notebooks from Kaggle. The first data set includes 12 columns and the second includes 100, 128 columns. We will vary the number of rows in our experiments. We, uh, for the first, for the right two columns in this, uh, in this table, they specify the number of printing date frames or printing series in respective notebooks. We have, in our experiments, we increase the number of rows and add the uh, system operations one by one. We can see that our system operation can significantly reduce the uh, execution time. Uh, however, for when the data set size is large, it still takes non-trivial time to return the recommendations. Therefore, we have a separate project called Modern for directly scaling Pandas execution. Its idea is to run Pandas API directly on distri distributed execution frameworks, such as Ray or Desk. To use Modern, you only need to change one line of your code. And the extended download is more than 7,000 and has over 7,000 GitHub stars. The core idea of Modern is to map the more than 600 pandas functions into 15 core operators and run them in parallel using techniques such as rule based composition or metadata independence. For the details, please check it out about Modern here. Finally, I want to share some lessons we have learned from building logs. The first one is, uh, is that it is very important to integrate with existing frameworks or existing uh, workflows rather than force users to use new tools. Given the popularity of Pandas uh, date frame, integrating logs into uh, date frame workflows can directly help the large population using Pandas. Secondly, it is also very important to integrate with downstream tools. For the case of logs, we are able to uh, export the visualizations directly to downstream dashboarding tools, so, such as uh, Streamlit or Palo. The final lesson is on the ability for customization. While logs has made its best effort to recommend the visualizations with appropriate encodings and chart type selections, users still want to customize their uh, still want to customize the visualizations based on uh, their own purpose. So logs is able to export a visualization to raw code like matplotlib or vigorlite, such that users can change their code to customize the visualization. Lox is one of the many projects in Epic Data Lab for democratizing data work via no-code and low-code interfaces. 
we want to explore more in this direction. And with that, I'd like to take any questions.